Hi, I'm Dr. Dan Ratner. Today I'm joined by Edgar Rivera. He is a comedian and a chronic pain sufferer, and I look forward to getting started with him on my mind body consultations in session one. If you haven't already, click subscribe, ring the bell for notifications, hit like if you like what you're hearing, and put your comments below, and I'll get back to you personally. And finally, you can reserve your place in one of my seminars or purchase any of my mind body guides, also known as PDFs, at www.crushingdoubt.org. So, Edgar, I want to welcome you. Thank you for your trust in coming here because we're going to talk about all kinds of things that went on for you. And you should you should say what's on your mind. You should uh, let me know if you have questions. Oh, I should... will. Trust me. You, you'll, yeah. get every, you, you'll get everything. I'm going to tell you about everything. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that sounds good. We're <laughs> off to a great start. So then, Edgar, let me tell you about how this system works. What we're going to do is is to look at your your physical symptoms, which we have a strong suspicion to have some mind-body components or are maybe caused by them entirely. And I'm going to lay out the system of how we can understand that from the mind-body perspective. Now, I've asked you to have uh, some paper with you and something to take notes with. Mm -hmm. And what I, what I usually do is we work on what I call a mind-body map. In the mind-body map, there are these three columns. So what I want you to do is draw draw lines on the paper, okay. equal equal columns of three columns. Mm -hmm. And at the top of uh, the left column, I want you to put emotions. In the middle, I want you to put doubt. And on the right, I want you to put power. Okay. Now I'm going to explain what each of these things are. Um, the way mind-body symptoms work are that uh, they're caused really by one of three things, and these columns represent the three things that they're caused by or how they work. The emotions column describes new symptoms. When a new symptom comes up or an uptick of an old symptom, something goes up, it's caused by some kind of emotional theme getting activated. So then this is what we're going to work on today is how to map out those emotional themes so that you can start to see what are the things that you need to be able to look into when, let's say, uh, you have a flare up of a spasm or something. You can think, OK, wait, I'm going to think emotionally about this. I'm going to go through my themes and see which one was active. That's what we're going to work on today. The next time we meet, we're going to work on doubt. Doubt is all about really three different things. There's three different levels of doubt. There is doubt as to whether it is a mind-body thing at all, or if you think it might be structural. You know, oh, I got in an accident, or I had this injury, or all of the things that make you think physically about the physicality of things. We're going to go through doubt. We're going to get your questions answered. And the second level is okay, I believe that this is a mind-body thing, but I'm not sure how far it goes, like how much of this is a mind-body thing. And the third one is, I believe it's a mind-body thing, I believe it goes as far as it can go, but I don't believe that I can make this better. I don't believe that my symptoms or my way of experiencing this can get better. I'm just giving you the basics of that. You don't even need to know that today. I just want to kind of give you some sense of where we're headed. And the power column is about your relationship with you. And it's going to be about understanding what's going on there and how that can lead to symptoms. If your relationship with you isn't feeling so good, that can lead to symptoms. So today we're going to start to analyze what's been happening for you physically and start to think about how might we think about this from the emotional side of things. And I may jump around in those columns. I may say, hey, Edgar, you know what? You just voiced a doubt. Let's put that in the doubt column. We'll get to that, you know, next time. Okay. But we're just taking notes. Does and I may jump so around too, since I have the worst case of adult ADD. So you know, you got okay. you got to bear with me too. <laughs> That's fine. Well, listen, I might ask you to repeat the questions a couple of times. <laughs> That's totally fine, and I I'll follow you where where you need to go. So let's start with the symptom. Um, what symptoms are you having? And it could be a chronic one, or it could be something that just started up recently or started up at a particular time, or it comes and it goes. What are the symptoms like? Let's get that description first. Okay, so um, 
um, I had a I had an accident. I fell down a flight of stairs, and the first thing that happened was I ruptured my quad completely off my right knee. So um, basically, they had to do the whole muscle reconstruction therapy. Nine months. Doctor told me it would be nine months for me to learn how to even walk again. And um, now it's been a year and a half. And I could walk, but I'm still not walking 100 percent. I'm still limping, whether I see it or not, I still could feel it. I still suffer a lot of numbness, a lot of like swelling, you know, swellingness. And then the, the second symptom I have is um, they replaced two herniated discs on my neck. So after the, the, the initial fall from the knee, which was the main pain, you know, I started experiencing pain on my left knee, but I thought I was just, you know, you know, constant pain, you know, comes, you know, like I'm walking more on the left knee. So I'm compensating on that knee. And then um, I started experiencing numbness, a lot of body numbness. I will wake up in the middle of the night, my arms are numb and my legs are numb. You know, um, they found the, the, the herniated disc. I have two pinched nerves in my lower back a quad and I have a torn meniscus on my left knee. So, okay, so the quads on the right knee, the torn the meniscus right is on the left, on the left knee. Okay. Two pinched nerves in my lower back. And then I had the two herniated discs that they did replace. So five and seven are, are replaced. Mm -hmm. And, um, that pain came later on that pain. Just like it, it just, you know, I, I, I was always feeling the numbness after a couple of shots. They gave me the shots, the, the cortisone shots and all that stuff. That thing worked, but it only helps you for just a little amount of time. And then it comes back. So the numbness started coming back and I started getting pain, like from my neck, down my shoulder, down the back of my arm, out here, through these three fingers. Constantly, every single day, all day at times, you know, I mean, it was just like. It, it, it was it was a nightmare. It was so bad that when the doctor told me, dude, you need surgery, I didn't even hesitate like twice because the pain that I was living with, you know, plus I'm mind you, I'm still dealing with the pain in the knee. So it was just like way, way too much. It was just I couldn't sleep. I couldn't do nothing. They replaced the disc. I, you know, I don't feel the pain anymore. Thank God that pain is gone. I have the pain now from the actual fact that they replaced two discs on my neck, you know? So I'm still, you know, tight. I can't, I don't have the whole motion yet. You know, it's uncomfortable to sleep at night. So I'm dealing with that pain. Along when was with that, the same when was pain. That, when was that surgery, Edgar? The neck? Yeah. February of this year, February 20th. Okay. February 20, 2021, yeah. Okay. And when did they say you'd heal on that one by? The doctor told me on this one, the healing process wouldn't be, it wasn't going to be so bad, as bad as the knee. Um, he told me six months, you know, by like six months, I should be all right where I don't feel the pain anymore and I should feel like less tightness, okay. you know? Yep. It's about that, about that time now, you know, I, I still feel, I still feel tight, you know, don't take me wrong. I'm still, I still like, I. I don't know. Cause it's, it's, it's weird. It's like when you learn how to walk again, you know, it's like you compensate and you don't even know you're compensating. You're just happy that you're doing it. So even though I look to the left, but I feel like I'm, I'm still using the body. Yeah. Yeah. I which can is see it. Not yeah. how it's supposed to be. So I'm still in physical therapy and taking that. But that's all. Okay. So Edgar, here's what I'm thinking. Um, you know, when I do these consultations, we can do the mind body map. And I think that that's something that we, we should definitely do, but I, I think we might want to take a little bit of time right here mm -hmm. to just um, talk about the basics of my work so that you can understand what, where I'm coming from and why. Now I had eight years of back pain myself and it was chronic every day. I had probably over a hundred spasms a day. Uh, it wasn't for the full eight years that I had that, but it was for at least over two years. And that's torture. I felt that my life was over. Mm -hmm. I, I had to give up basketball. I had to give up almost everything. I, mm -hmm. I, I, I wasn't sleeping well. It would wake me up in the middle of the night to a spasm. 
people didn't understand what was going on. I didn't understand what was going on. I wasn't getting any answers. Does this sound at all familiar to you? No, I mean, 100%. I mean, I went through the same thing. I felt like, you know, this fall took me completely out of everything that I was doing, you know? So not only did I fall and you know, <clears throat> I lost the power of walking, but I lost what I, you know, the job I loved. I lost the security, you know, and everything, you know, little by little, you know, like now I'm stuck at home. Um, depression kicked in, you know, obviously it's like one after the other, which I do believe adds to the pain that you're already suffering on top of it, you know, emotionally yep. and stressfully and ever thinking about everything else. So, yeah, I agree with you 100 percent. That's exactly how I felt, you know, okay. it's not probably worse. Yep. And so. We've been through something similar. And what I ended up finding is uh, doctors couldn't get me any answers at all. I didn't end up getting towards the surgery route. And I somehow just wasn't going to do that. Though I do understand what you're saying when you were like, if somebody told me they could just do an operation, it would be better. I would have done it. I felt if I could <laughs> cut my back off of my body, I would do it. It, it was like, that's how bad it was. I, I feel your yeah, I could, I could feel your pain, man. It gets to the point that everybody was like, dude, dude, don't do it. Don't do this. That's it. Do it. And it wasn't, I, I tell people, it wasn't a pain that was going to kill me. It wasn't that I was going to die from this pain. But it was just so annoying, like constantly this shock, shock, like, like it was just bad, you know? So when it came to that point that they were like surgery, I'm like, Oh my God, anything, you know, as, as, and, and then thank God I went in with a positive attitude because sometimes we are our own worst enemy and think negative. And then you're going in with a negative mind. That's not going to work. So thank God I went in there with a positive attitude. But to me, that was my last choice at that moment, you know? And it, and it makes a lot of sense, but here's what happened to me. I was working with a chiropractor, you know, eventually you go these alternative routes because medicine's not helping. And I knew about, the mind body idea in theory, but I just was like, this is, this feels so real that it can't be that, which is, I'm, that's a total misunderstanding. Cause if it, if it, it's not in your head, it's from your head and it becomes real in the physiology. And I didn't understand that, mm -hmm. but this chiropractor thankfully pointed me to this book by a guy named Dr. John Sarno. You ever heard of him? No. Okay. I hadn't either. And I was like, very skeptical of this. He was like, read this book. Some people get relief from this. I was like, oh my God, a book that gives me relief from back pain. What is going on here? Because I'm thinking purely physically. And I even didn't read it for a year. I was like, okay, well, I'll buy the book. And then I just let it sit on my shelf. But eventually... Because we refuse to believe, you know, like we're so like in our own ways that we refuse to be like, nah, come on, that book is not going to take away this pain. Yeah, well, I mean, I just I felt like I was getting like an invitation to Scientology or something. I was like, I don't, I'm not <laughs> going in that. But, you know, you get desperate enough, I would have drank a bucket of sand to, to get rid of the pain. Mm -hmm. So I was like, well, if that's the case, why don't I just read this book? Well, I might as well. So I read the book and I was very surprised... <laughs> to find that Dr. Sarno was completely scientific, completely logical, and he put all of this evidence in there that has been discovered in scientific journals, and all of the science and the logic actually points completely in the opposite direction of everything we hear. As an example, there are studies that show that herniated discs do not have any correlation to pain at all. And I was like, what? <laughs> That's not what I had heard. Interesting. Yeah. So, I mean, <laughs> and I, so I started digging That's into this. getting me mad right now. I'm like, man, look. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, if we can get you cured of pain entirely, I think you'll, I think you'll get over that, right? <laughs> uh, of course, yeah, of course. But I get you. Uh, you know, you, you've been through hell and you... These people who told you this, I'm not saying that they had bad intentions. They, I'm sure they were trying to help. But it, for whatever reason, oh, well, there's multiple reasons for it, our society has gotten steered away from the, the reality of things. We're not, we're not thinking straight. Mm -hmm. And I started looking at all the evidence, and here's the thing. Humanity has known that the mind can affect the body in very profound ways. And if you look at 
all different cultures across history up until about the 1950s in Western medicine, everyone knew that the mind could cause actual major physical changes. Not only that, but basic logic shows us this too. When you get sad, you cry. It's an actual physical change. When you get embarrassed, your blood flow changes, you blush, a whole different thing. I say this all the time, but sexual attraction is the same thing. Usually, you know, you don't get an erection because somebody walked right up to you and rubbed up on you. That's not usually how it happens. It's usually yeah. a mind thing first. Well, depending on where you are. I'm sorry, I had to throw that one. <laughs> Sorry. Well, listen, I and 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 remember, Edgar's a comedian, so <laughs> yeah, yeah, he, he's not I'm gonna be able to help back. himself. I'm holding it back, <laughs> yeah, don't, don't like, hold back. I'm like, be, be serious, Edgar. Be serious. Be you. Be you. Right. Um, so you get goosebumps when you get kind of freaked out by something. Mm-hmm. So we we have all this evidence. We we know that the mind affects the body all the time, every day. But people are not thinking about that in terms of pain, even though we say that we get tension headaches. That's acknowledged somehow, that you can get a headache, you know, an ache here, but you can't in your shoulder, or you can't in your knee, or you can't in your back. And then on top of it, there's these injuries that happen that make it very confusing, because you hurt yourself, and then you're like, why am I not healing? The body always heals. You break a bone, it gets better in under 12 weeks at worst. Mm -hmm. So when you don't heal, that's when it has crossed over, even if it was a true injury at the beginning, it has crossed over into what I call a mind-body feedback loop where your fear response is actually making the physiology stay injured. It's actually continuing to inflame things it's it can cause actual swelling it can cause all the things that happen so I see it happening as well as like me thinking about it and why why isn't this healing why is and why is and why isn't this healing why and I, and I feel like I'm feeding into it as well you know yeah like, and it's natural that you'd be thinking that but but think about it this way when you're thinking that way even if it is natural it's not very different than if you're being chased by a lion. It's scary. You feel like, I'm never going to get better. This is, this is a disaster. There's bad things happening. And suddenly you've got all these changes in your body. Cortisol comes rushing in and adrenaline and your heart tends to be elevated. Your heart rate, your breathing is more shallow. Everything changes. The oxygen mm-hmm. levels to... Muscles change, that which can lead to lots of soreness. Your blood flow can change. It can cause numbness because that anything can happen. So here's what I discovered. The body can do all of these things. And the brain is capable of controlling the body. And I'm even going to tell you how. I did a lot of investigation about this. I didn't find all of the, uh, this out right then. But what I found is that there is a there's a thing in the body it's, you don't need to know the term that much but it's called peptides i'm just going to give you the idea of it what it is essentially is it's the way that the brain communicates between itself and any cell in the body it can go tell that cell get rid of all your fluid or it can tell that cell activate the pain receptors or it can tell that cell uh, cause an itch right now Mm-hmm. It, it can do anything. So anything that the body can already do can be co-opted by the mind. Mm-hmm. Injuries do happen. You know, the quad injury, that was a real injury. You fell down the stairs. You know, the extent of the injury, I, I don't know, but I, I I believe what doctor said. And maybe it even required the surgery to reattach it. I understand that. But everything heals. You know, it was supposed to be nine months. It's, you know, a year and a half later. You're still feeling it. What that tells me is there is now a mind-body element to it that's perpetuating it. And if I can help you have no doubt about it, that's why this, this show is called Crushing Doubt. If I can help you have no doubt about this by presenting you the scientific evidence and the logical evidence and my system, we will break that cycle You'll stop thinking in the ways that perpetuate the physiological experience and you will get entirely better 
and complete relief from the symptoms. Sounds good. So I'm sure it sounds good, right? Sounds great. <laughs> but the question is, is, of course it sounds good, but here's the question. It doesn't matter what I think. It only matters what you think. Mm -hmm. So when I say these things to people, some people are like, yeah, you're making sense. I'm right there with you. And other people are like, I don't know. <laughs> and so, and, and I'm, I'm not going to be offended by any direction you go with that, but I do wonder where, where do you stand with it? Does this sound like it's making sense to you? Does, or does no, it, feel... it does, it does make sense. I, yeah. you know, even before we had this conversation and I told you earlier that, um, you know, I, I wanted to come into this clear. I didn't want to see anybody else's episodes. I wanted to come in, you know, and experience this as it goes. But um, I am a strong believer in, in, in how the mind could cause pain and how the pain, sometimes we make the pain worse than it is. You know, I always, my mom, may she rest in pieces the same way I always told her. She was like, oh, I can't, I can't do this. I, I can't do that. Oh, 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 um, and, and I said, mom, you, you're, you're, you're doubting, you're doubting it. Why, why would your mind tell you, yeah, you could do it when you're already saying it first? You know what I'm saying? So I'm a strong believer in like in the mind, you know, I mean, I'm yep. curious to see how we go about it. But yeah, I mean, I am definitely open and, and strong believer in it as well. Well, great. This is off to a great start. And I've given you kind of the basics. There, There's a lot more to it, but mm -hmm. I wanted to give you the basics because, you know, some people come to these consultations having read lots of these books, but you haven't. And so no, I haven't no, at all. At that's all. why I, I wanted to give you just a basic gist of what. And I did it like that. Like I said, I did it on purpose because I wanted to come yeah. in. I didn't want to, you know, how sometimes we, you know, you, you see something and you, you know, it already guides you in your mind in that way. That's why I told myself, I was like, I'm not even going to look into it. You know, yeah. said, let's, see what, yeah. let's see what happens. That's great. I appreciate your open mindedness. So. Yes, when I start to show you how the system works, things are going to start to click into place and you'll see, oh, this really does make sense. But keep asking questions. Your, your job is to ask the questions. I will just give you the information and then mm -hmm. we see where that goes. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's now do, let's now start in on the mind body map. Now that you know the basics, we're going to look at the emotions column. The emotions column is about when the symptoms started. Now, I understand some of your symptoms started like when you fell down the stairs. That's not an emotional experience. I, I suppose there is an emotional experience with it, but there was a direct physical injury. I, I have one podcast episode where I talk about distinguishing between true injuries that become mind-body issues versus ones that s just start off as mind-body issues. Mine just started off as a mind-body issue. I I just was time, bending over to tie my shoelaces and felt a little twinge and started to think maybe it's going to develop into back pain. And did I injure it weightlifting, which I was doing at the time? That's not like how yours started with yeah, that mine injury. Is like, mine is a, I, I would say mine is a physical because it happened so quick. And, you know, and like you said, I mean, the I would like to think that the surgery that did happen, at least the first one was necessary to attach the muscle. But yep, I, I believe that, everything that came with the fall messed me up mind mentally, you know, like the, the depression that the everything else, seeing everything go down. So, yeah. So yeah. I made it, it, it was a physical injury, but I turned it quickly into a mind as well. Cause I started stressing it more. Yep. And so you know? I, uh, there's somebody that I, when I started seeing people for mind body reasons, um, one of the first people that I saw kind of early on, um, was somebody who had a surfing accident. He uh, punctured a lung. And um, it was really excruciatingly painful. And ironically, he didn't develop symptoms around that. He, he started meditating to manage the pain around that, and then he developed chronic headaches. But what happened, and I see this as somewhat similar to, to your story, is that the initial physical injury set off a whole cascade of events of feelings about the physical world and a sense of vulnerability. Mm -hmm. So when I'm thinking about your themes, when I think about emotional themes, we think about broad things, very big ideas, uh, mortality, vulnerability, validity, self-esteem, respect, things like that, really big ideas. One theme I'm already hearing that may be active for you, and I want you to tell me if it rings true or not, is vulnerability. 
one minute you were fine. You fall down the stairs. You're in a you're in physical hell for a while. You're in emotional and psychological hell also. That must mm-hmm. bring up the sense that things can just get wrecked mm-hmm. in an instant. And that's exactly how it felt to me yeah. at that moment. You know, the the way it happened, where it happened, it was just like instantly, like, you know, like, wow, this is reality. So I would write this down in the emotions column, something like this, and you can put it in your words, but something like this. Danger can come out of nowhere instantly and wreck your life. My bad. Hold on. Mm hmm. Okay. Okay. Now I want to ask you a question about that, Edgar. Is that something, is that a theme that you would have thought before falling down the stairs? Is that something that you've experienced in your life otherwise? The danger can come out of nowhere, or is it more one that developed then? Um. I guess I guess I experienced it before, but not as 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 loud as this one was. You know what okay. I'm saying? Like this one was probably a, like the, the eye opener. You know? Yeah, yeah. You know? Okay, that makes sense. Because some some of what happens with this is you have a mind body experience, and it awakens the themes that were already there, but they weren't as big, not mm-hmm. as pronounced. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about. Um, you 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 started to feel pretty depressed at various points in this, right? Yes. What what form did those thoughts take? What what were the kinds of things you found yourself thinking? Um well, in my career at that mo- at that moment in time, you know, um it was finally, you know, looking up like, you know, it was it was Hard work pays off, you know, starving artists, you know, making it, trying to work. And then so I was finally getting to where I thought 2020 was going to be the one, you know, I had everything lined up. Everything was ready, you know, and, and, and I was like, yeah. And then, boom, this happened. Yeah. You know, and, so, and now, meanwhile, the pandemic came in also, which I know. Yeah. Was- so this happened before the pandemic, because I had the actual the initial accident happened December of 2019. So it was like right at the end of the year. And um it just it, it um it scared me because of my line of business. You know, like I left I left of my regular paying job union salary, you know, and everything else. I left that like about five years ago to pursue comedy full time, you know. So finally I was where I was at a place where I was like, okay, I'm doing it, you know. I'm not where I wanna be, but I could at least breathe. Because everything is getting paid, you know. I, I don't have what I want yet, but everything is getting paid, and it's smooth sailings now. And then yeah. something like this happens, and automatically, I mean, pain and and stress kick in. Because what am I gonna do now? Now I can't work. Now how I can't you, do this. How did you interpret that? Um, was that like safety is a pretty safety and security? Those are some of those big ideas. Well, that- yeah. So uh, you know it. I've been doing comedy for 18 years, you know, not full time because of the security of having a full time job. You know, it's very hard for people to leave that security to pursue a dream, which is what I was doing, you know. Mm-hmm. So it, it took me a, a long time to say, OK, I'm going to take that 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 leap. And it's, I struggled a little, but then finally I'm getting there and then boom, now I feel like I'm hand right way right back, you know. Right, right. So it's like you know, I can't walk. I, th- I have to depend on someone. I, I can't. I can't do. I couldn't do nothing. You know. So that really set me back. So I'm gonna try out a couple themes here. I'm gonna suggest themes, and you're gonna tell me if they feel like they're right. Okay. Okay. All right. One is just when I'm final. Just when my hard work is finally paying off, I get slammed. And it all gets ruined. Yeah. Um, maybe when it happened, I was thinking like that. 
Now at this moment of day, ruin I wouldn't use because okay, what would you use? Now? Everything is replaceable. You know, okay. everything, everything, everything can happen all over again. But at that moment, yeah, I could, I would say everything was ruined. Like everything was like wow. Okay, you so th this is a very important point, Edgar, that you just made. We're looking for themes that last. If if you just felt that in the moment and then it doesn't feel that way, I wouldn't I wouldn't write down that theme. Let's look for themes that are the lasting themes of your life. So actually, now let's go back. Let's go back to the beginning. What are the what are the things that happened in your life that informed your sense of your life as a as an emotional being? You know what what happened. And what do you mean? Like, what way? Like, like, well, I'll give you an example. Um, I mean, I had some formative experiences. My father died when I was uh, uh, six weeks old. Um, my whole family was kind of ravaged by that. And there are, you know, that led to me often not feeling um, as seen or attended to, or maybe there wasn't room for me. These are themes that lasted from that point all the way until actually until I resolved my symptoms and figured out these themes, mm -hmm. I continued to feel that way. I don't feel that way now. I, I don't at all, but they mm -hmm. were kind of the bedrock themes of my life. You know, if I had to describe me to someone, the things I've struggled with, those would be the things. So that's what I'm asking. Like what, what are the things you've struggled with in your life? That's a better way of putting it. Struggled. Um, relationships. Um, in what way? Let's get specific. Well, you know, I, I got married young. You know, I got married when I when I was seventeen, the first time around. You know, and I've That's always young. very young, very young. I think my father just got fed up and said, "Oh, you want to get married?" and signed my ass away. And it was like it was it was very young. But I don't know, being Latino and seeing how my parents were, I guess you always want to go that route. So I always felt like I've tried extra hard to make a relationship work. And, you know, so I've struggled a lot with relationships. Um, Work-wise, if I didn't like doing something, I just, just gave up, you know? Like, dude, I was thinking about it the other day. I just came back from New York and... And I'm like thinking, oh man, I worked there. Oh, I did this. Oh, I worked that. And I'm like, dude, I had my nephew was like, how many jobs do you have? And I was like, thought about it. And I was like, it was the same thing. Like, like if 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 I was doing something and I know deep down inside this is not what I wanted to do, it was easily for me the the bounce. My sister brought up a great point. She goes, comedy has been the longest job you've ever had. I've been doing comedy 18 years, but you know, so. If you ask me the issues, I would say relationships was, was the main one. Okay. I was and never, I was, I've always been from one to the other, one to the other, one to the other, never giving time to myself, never realized, you know, one wondering what I want, you know, asking me what I wanted, you know, things that I see now that when we were young, you don't see, you yep. know? Okay. So I'm going to say some things about that, but, bef but since we're taking notes, the thing you said about jobs and things like that, this is something that I would actually put in what you will see is the power column. Mm -hmm. You were not willing to compromise yourself and just go do something you really didn't want. That's a power column move. That's good. Mm -hmm. That's actually good. So I, I might put that in your power column as just like a, it's an added strength that you've had where you're like, I followed my heart when it came to what to do with my life. Not only followed my heart, it was very hard to this day because coming from a Latino household, coming from parents who blue collar workers who, you know, you need to have the job with the benefits and the 401k and the retirement because that's how you're going to live, you know, and social security and everything else. It was very hard for them to see what I love, you know, when I found comedy, I said, this is, this is what I want to do. This is what I love. This is what makes me happy, yeah. you know, and, and, and to do it with their support. Yeah. They support. Oh, good luck. Good luck. But deep down inside, I knew they didn't support it. Deep down yeah. inside, they thought I was crazy for leaving the, the beautiful job and everything. Uh, else to okay. You just hit on a great emotional theme. Then let's jump back to the emotions column and put down something like this deep down. 
I knew that my family didn't think I was doing the right thing to pursue comedy and what I wanted. Does that feel accurate? Yeah. Okay. The reason this kind of thing is big, and I want to start to show you how this works. You could have physical pain in a situation where you're, let's say you're interacting with your family and you're telling them about a show you did and they're like, you kind of feel like they're shaking their head at it or thinking like, oh, Edgar, he could have been something or some kind of nonsense like that because I applaud you. I think it's great. Um, that could lead to a symptom, that sense of not being recognized. And I believe that it, it emotionally and mentally messes with you as well, because that doubt becomes your doubt as well. Yep. So no matter how much I see what I want to do and how much I this, you know, having that little doubt and not having that support from your, your family, you know, which they do. I'm not saying that they don't support me, but it, 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 it was, you know, at least for my parents, it was very hard for them to see. Yeah, and but this is this is not about criticizing anyone else, but I think the the doubt it would be hard to stand on your own. So I I put this in the doubt column. Um, you know, can I can I achieve what I need to achieve while the people who are supposed to believe in me don't fully? Okay. All right, well, now we're, we're always going to come back to the other columns, but we got to an important emotion, emotional theme about your work, your passion, okay. right? Now let's do the relationships one. It sounded like you were saying that in relationships, you spend a lot of time not thinking about you so much. Your own needs don't sound like they get met as easily in relationships. Is mm -hmm. that right? Yeah. Is there some way you would say it differently than what I said, or does that just sound like I nailed it? Um, you nailed it pretty much. You know, I felt, I mean, I guess, you know, I felt like I would do the, the extra mile and it was never matched in my own opinion, you know? Yep. So yep. it was like, you try, you try, you try, and... You know, if the uh, it, it takes two to make a relationship work. It takes two people to be in the same page, or at least try to be in the same page to make something work. So yeah, so with relationships, yeah, that's a that's always been my struggle. And so and I, like I said, I've been from one after the other, after the other, after the other. Yeah, but I actually hear two emotional themes in here. So this is this is good. Not good that you experience this suffering, but good mm -hmm. that we understand it. One is, I never felt that the other person in re in a relationship was working at it as hard as I was. Now I have to ask you a question about this, this Edgar. What did that mean to you? Does that then mean, does that leave you worrying that you always care more than the other person? Or what, what does it mean in your mind? I guess it brought the the doubt of love, caring. You know, do you care less? You know, I mean, right. is it what is it? Why is it so easily for me to do something and it's not? You know what I'm saying? Like, D did it did it feel like um, why am I not like uh, valuable enough or lovable enough that someone else would do these things for me? I don't know that that's the case. I'm just you, you know, I mean, like like every relationship, everything starts out beautiful and dandy in the beginning, you know, and two people two people really get to know each other. That's in the true color. So I felt like in the beginning it was always nice, but then it always took a turn, you know. So it it was it was just I think consuming too much of my time wondering why, 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 why must I ask you to do something when you could do it on your own? You know, you don't ask me to do certain things. Yeah. So uh, there's things a question, there's a question of why, why was I willing to give more than the other person? Why was I always willing to give more than the other person? Yeah. Write it down. Uh, that, Cause 
when you have symptoms, it could be that you're in another situation again where you're giving more than the other person's giving. That can activate symptoms. Do you see what I mean? That's what these themes are for. They're to help you identify when... What was that did... last one you said? Up down. What was the last one you said? It was, um, why am I always willing to give more in relationships than the other people do? You so the way this you got me writing like a doctor over here. Nobody will ever understand what I'm writing right now. <laughs> Chicken scratch. All right. <laughs> Listen, I, I want you to understand it though. But yeah, as long as I understand, that's what counts. Also, you know what's great is we actually have this on film. So <laughs> there you go. Yeah, we, we can. We've got the notes right here. Mm -hmm. But I want to just start to get you a sense of how this works. Like if you have a new pain, let's say. Let's say you're hanging out and suddenly your shoulder starts hurting and you're like, oh, what is this? You might go through these themes and be like, wait a minute. Was I just having an interaction with somebody where I cared more than they did? Or was I just having an interaction about my comedy and somebody not believing in me? Those are the themes that are going to nail these symptoms. And what you're going to find is if we get these symptoms exactly right, those symptoms will be controllable. They will just go away because you'll understand them in these emotional terms. So now, do you realize this as 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 the symptoms are happening or 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 as later on as you go like maybe at the end of the night you think about it and then that's when you ask yourself and then that's it how can, we that's how we attack it. It can be either one, but but basically I I'm just I'm giving you a tool that you can use to attack it in either way. Okay. When you are having the symptom, you could start thinking about these. And one thing I say to people is I have found that in, in mind-body experience, we are moment-to-moment -moment beings, meaning whatever your emotional experience is of the moment is what happens physiologically. Think about it this way. When, when you're sitting there, and you're totally fine, and then suddenly you remember a situation that made you angry, your body actually goes and gets angry. Mm -hmm. you, you, you're right back in it. The mm -hmm. physiology all comes rushing back. The same is true here in reverse. If you can understand what this is about, the physiology can change. Yeah. So when I have a symptom of any kind, I think about what, what's happening. You know what's interesting? I mean, there's many interesting things, but here's, here's an interesting thing. I just noticed in the last like couple minutes that my lower back is hurting while we're talking. And... Uh, this kind of stuff can happen all the time. So here's what I would do. I would think, what was it? And I'll tell you, I think I know what it was. It was the fact that something you were talking about, the theme of what you loved and who you were not being seen. That's one of my themes. Mm -hmm. So one of my themes was getting activated and my body started talking. It was like, Dan, remember? You don't like that. So it was it was truly like sympathy pains. I was like, man, I don't like that Edgar went through that. I don't like that I went through that. Because it, 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 it triggers, right? So yeah. It's like a trigger for yourself. Yeah, but you know what? It might have even been the I do more in relationships than other people do because I have that one too, <laughs> you know? So we, we have, which is, I mean, it's not true in all of my relationships, but it's true in enough of them. Mm -hmm. And so... I'm, I've learned to trust my body is expressing something. So, you know, it is it is true. It might be like later in the day I think about it and I'm like, oh, that's why it was. So we always think about the timing of symptoms like that. This symptom coming up now, it came up now because something was happening now. Mm -hmm. it, doesn't, it doesn't come up, you know, three hours later or even 20 minutes later. It comes up right when it's happening. So I've learned to trust my body because I, it's not like I was consciously aware of anything. I was more busy doing this job here. Mm -hmm. But now my body's like, hey, remember when you're done with the session with Edgar, try to figure out where this back pain is because you didn't like something in your, your, own, exp your own experience was kind of activated. One of your themes. You and I happen to have some themes in common. 
<clears throat> and it includes that I'm basically a comedian, but I became a psychologist instead. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I do. I I mean, I do agree with you 100 percent, you know, and and with the relationships, I mean, now. Now, I'm, dude, I'm be 45, bro, and I'm like, I'm single now and it's it's weird because through the, all the experiences you know you try to I always try to learn from something you know you, you you learn from every every little thing you you're supposed to learn from it and even now i'm hesitant to get back into something for that same reason okay so now that's an, that's another theme mm -hmm. i'm hesitant to get back into a relationship because see if you can put that into words i'm hesitant to get back into another relationship because I doubt with all my previous relationships and all the experiences and, and what I've gone through and, 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 and all like the thoughts of me giving a hundred and not getting back and, and fear, fear of, of getting into something that's not going to work out. That's, you know, eventually going to fade away just like everything else. So is the, is, is the fear of getting hurt or is it more the, let me think about how I was thinking about this. The, the fear could be of getting hurt, but it could also be uh, of the the disappointment of the experience. Disappointment, um, losing time. Uh, okay. See, write all of this down. You know? Disappointment, disappointment. fear of hurt, losing time. Um, I asked, I had one other question edgar is there is there a theme of this is a sign that i'm not good enough do you ever do you ever I, that's that is definitely not the case but i'm not wondering about what is i'm wondering about what you actually feel do i question it sometimes yeah 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 do i question yeah it, it, i mean i believe if something keeps on happening so much you know and repetitive uh, you know like over and over yeah i believe anybody would question themselves and, and and say am i am i the problem, I the problem? Which, which which is things that i've asked myself you know maybe, maybe it's me you know maybe maybe i'm the problem you know maybe right. i'm so caught up in my own world that i'm never gonna meet that perfect other person that's gonna be identical or we could click like that you know what i'm saying so yep, yep. so yeah i'm pretty sure it could bring a lot of doubt Okay, so put this down as a theme. Well, let's think about how to put it into words and we'll wrap up on this for today. But um, something like, I, I wonder afraid if... Of wasting, I'm afraid of wasting time. Okay. If, and, 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 and yeah, and getting hurt. Getting hurt of reliving the same experiences all over again. Of, of, okay, you know. so... I'm he we don't have to develop the themes fully, but I'm hearing them as separate themes. I'm afraid of getting hurt is one. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid of wasting time or losing time is another. Mm -hmm. um, I'm afraid of finding out the problem is me. Uh, this is not true, but I think that's mm -hmm. one of the themes. Okay, so now I want to say one thing, Edgar, because we're kind of in, we're in the I'm middle. Be afraid of. of, of be afraid of the problem. The problem being me should be a doubt. Yeah. I, and right? I put that, well, here's the thing. It's an emotional theme and it's a doubt and uh, because it can operate in both ways. It can, it can bring up um, an onset of a symptom, the acute pain of the emotional column. And it can also leave you feeling scared and uncertain and confused in the doubt column sort of way that could lead to chronic issues at the same time because that's what the doubt column is for is the chronic issues so write it down in both it's okay to have an idea appear in all three columns mm -hmm. it operates differently in each column that was a great question okay. i mean you already got me thinking yeah. you know because that's that's what i'll do now like like you said like you I think you brought up the perfect example on how you said your lower back just hurt and it was because of something that I said, Yep. you know, and yep. we don't realize that, you know, and, and especially nowadays with the, the stress that we are all going through with everything happening in the world, you know, I think people are just, it's, it's, it's even worse, you know, it's even yeah. worse. So Mo I'm definitely going to think about everything. 
Good. Most people would say, oh, maybe I've been sitting in this chair too long, or maybe, maybe I, you know, maybe I'm just getting old. Or they, you they know, it's funny have... that the minute you said that, I, I've been getting pain, not pain, numbness on my oh. left leg, from my hip to my 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 knee on the thigh, the, out, the outside of my, my thigh. A lot of numbness. You know, usually I'm standing and I'm getting this numbness, and I'm like, where is this pain coming from? Doctors will make you believe since I have two pinched nerves in my lower back that that's that's the pain. You know, that that was the first thing I went to. Yep. I said, like, oh, my God, it's the back. They fixed yep. the neck and now my spine is straight. Now I'm now I'm dealing and I've been getting this pain. But now listening to you, now I'm, I'm going crazy. Now I'm thinking now I can't wait for the pain to come back to see what am I experiencing? What am I seeing? You know, like what, what's going on? And and yeah, I mean, it's interesting. Definitely, definitely interesting. All right, so let's let's do this. We're we're gonna meet again uh, in the next week or two and keep this going. And I'm gonna keep orienting you to things. We'll also we can text or email about it. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if you want to do this, but you certainly can. I can also point you to some some reading, which could be things that you read, you know, in a book, or if you prefer it on audio, we can certainly mm-hmm. do that. Audio will be much better. Okay, well, and that's not required. But if you if you listen to one of the Sarno books. You're gonna be blown away. And That's the I, John. You said John's. What, how John do you Sarno. Last, how do you say his last, spell his last name? S A R N O. I'll, I'll text it to you. That his book, The Divided Mind, is the best one. Um, I, I love all four of them, but and that's the most in depth one. But it is a staggering case against structural ideas of the body and about the emo- emotional side of things and how powerful it is. If you are interested, I highly recommend it. I can give you I can give you one of his other books if you want a, a shorter read um, or a shorter listen. But man, that book changed my life. And, definitely, yeah, definitely. That's that's interesting. So let's let's keep I, I talking. I like how you went back. I like how you 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 definitely went back, and I'm pretty sure there's way way because now you you just messed my head up so high and i'm like <laughs> now i'm gonna be thinking about every emotional stress that i have that's adding to all of this you know because there's a lot a lot a lot happened to me in 2020 so I don't, so make I'm, notes of it anything that's of significance put it in your column so that we okay. can explore it in the okay. meantime actually this is going to be great comedy fodder because you're going to know you even better now <laughs> I, 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 that's what I want, man. I mean, definitely what I definitely want. Get get to know me even better, man. All right, so, that sounds yeah. good. So Edgar, we'll be in touch, and um, we'll we'll keep it up. But I'm I'm really excited to see where this can go for you. All right, thank you, Doctor Dan. I'm excited as well, man. Thank you so much for everything. All right, I'll see you soon. All right, have a good. One. That was a super fun session in a lot of ways. I mean, first of all, Edgar is just such a good guy and a very funny comedian, but. He also just has a heart of gold, and I loved that he was so open about what he shared. The other thing that I really loved about this session, though, is that I was starting with a blank slate. He's never really heard about these things, and so I got to work in a new way. Not a new way in that I've never done this before, but in a new way from what you've seen. And what I got to do is to begin to shape how he could understand these things, to talk about the basics of Sarno. I sometimes don't get to do that because a lot of people who come on already know these things. And so it was great to get to see his reaction to these ideas and see him take to them so well. And then we started to get into the depth of the emotions column. And I could see him soaking it up and understanding what what he's hearing. And we're going to see where this goes. That's a lot of fun and it's very gratifying to see someone who is as good a person as him get the help he needs. If you haven't already, click subscribe, ring the bell for notifications, hit like if you like what you're hearing, and put your comments below, and I'll get back to you personally.